what the? 1026, Started. Let's throw this tape away. So what we're doing today? Um, well, basically, what we have is a situation where the night stands are done. So we are all going to follow what has been going on in Advanced Woods, and that is this cabinet. Let me slide on over there. Okay. So what we've been doing today is we're working on the drawers. All right, so you can kind of see the trim that we're doing around the drawers today. Okay, it's this bull nose trim, all right? So these three guys have it already. This one doesn't, this is the drawer we're gonna do right now. Um, it does add a nice little look to the project, adds a little more dimension to it. Um, works pretty good. And it is, I got somebody coming in. Um, it's an interesting process. Um, so let's take a look at the plans real quick and I'll show you what, what is actually going on. If I can make this larger. So this is basically what we're doing. We're doing this, this beaded trim, this bull nose trim that goes around the drawers, okay? And here's the process. This particular set of plans um, asked that you completely build the drawers before doing this beadwork. What that means is now we have a completed drawer that you have to run a rabbit all the way around the circumference of the drawer front to accept this bead trim, okay? And this is basically the rabbit. This is the setup right here, okay? So what it is, it's a, this is the, a looking at it from the side. This is the drawer front right here. So there's a quarter inch rabbit that runs quarter inch this way, quarter inch this way. And this little beaded part is three eighths of an inch. So it basically sticks out about an eighth of an inch. Okay, and it's supposed to be a rounded um, bull nose. Okay, so that's what we're doing. <coughs> we're gonna go through the process and... Okay, Brandon, thank you. Um, and see how it's done. Okay, so let's get back over here to the main table. So basically, this one just got done last period. We're using uh, guitar binding tape to hold the pieces in place. It's almost impossible to, to clamp something like that. So I'm gonna get this out of the way. So the first thing I did um, in preparation for all this was number one, created a whole bunch of this molding okay and basically it's really hard to see but there's a little rounded edge here i'm kind of looking at the screen at the same time okay and flat on the back so this is rounded this is a bull nose right here okay so the way we do this is um hold on i got somebody coming in so here's kind of the process of it Following our normal order of operations, um, I thicknessed the material. I got two boards about 36 inches long, about five inches wide. I thicknessed it down to a quarter of an inch. 
and in the thicknessing process, um, anytime you're trying to thickness something to fit snugly inside something else, basically what I did was I did a test run um, with the dado saw setup that we're using for the drawers on a piece of scrap material. And then I take this over to the drum sander with me, which is the second, which is the last place I go to get the material down to the actual thickness. Okay. So if I have this over there, as I'm running these boards through the drum sander, I can always check them against this dado or this rabbit to see when it's flush at the top, when it's even. So I get it to the right thickness. Okay. So now I have these, um, then I come to the joiner, joint one edge, rip the opposite edge, get it parallel edges. So then we head over to the router table and at the router table we have what's called, and I'm going to try and hold this so you can see it in the white there. I'm gonna, let me bring this in just a little bit so you can see it. This is called a bullnose bit, all right? And it rounds this over in one complete in a single pass. So here's the bit. All right, you can kind of see the profile of the bit. And if my hand wasn't there, that white background looks like it works better. But you can kind of see the profile of the bit and how it works. So here's how you do it. So once you have the bit in place, once you have it set properly and all that stuff. Okay. So these were my original boards. I've cut a lot of pieces off of them. They were about five inches wide when I started. So what you do is you, is you do run the bullnose along this edge. Then you flip it over, you run the bull nose along this edge. Then you come over the table saw, fence is set to three eighths of an inch. You rip this edge off, you rip this edge off, go back to the router table, round the edge, round the edge, rip it off, rip it off. Just keep going until you basically run out of material. Um, and you end up with, <coughs> excuse me, a whole bunch of sticks of this bull nose trim. Okay, hold on, I got two people coming in. <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> excuse me, I have all this trim, all right? So, <clears throat> excuse me, anytime we're doing molding trim like this, that's, especially if it's going to require a 45 degree angle on the ends, which this does, I like to make a lot of extra um, because I'm, you're going to make mistakes. Um, you're going to end up cutting pieces too short. You got to start over with a new piece. Um, and another reason is that this entire project is made from red oak. And oak is notorious for splitting, tearing out, splintering, doing weird things, especially on the router table. So I wanted extra. Um, I did not want to have to go back through this whole process again of thicknessing, creating the bull nose, all that stuff. So I made a whole bunch of extra. And this can always be set aside, set aside, set aside somewhere for other projects. There's a lot of projects that use this little kind of bull nose trim stuff. So that got my trim ready. Okay, next trick. Let's get the drawer ready. Okay. <clears throat> and that requires running a rabbit all the way around the edge of this drawer, quarter inch deep, quarter inch wide. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sucking a lot of sawdust today. So we're going to do that over the, the dado saw. So I'm going to move this thing over and we'll take a look. All right. So Dado saw is already set up to cut quarter inch deep by quarter inch wide rabbit. Okay. So, a couple things about this particular cut. Okay. Um, this is going to be one of those exceptions to the rule of things we are allowed or not allowed to do um, when we're using a fence on a table saw. For example, I'm going to have to do it in a configuration like this, boxing up and standing on a space. I can do that fine. I've got the long edge against the fence. But I'm also going to have to put the rabbit along the ends, okay? What I have now is a situation where the short edge is against the fence. That's a no-no in here, all right? But short of having to move the fence for every time you cut an end or an edge, um, the only other option I really have is to use a miter gauge. 
Okay? So I have a minor gauge here. Now normally, when you use a minor gauge in concert with a rip fence, what we generally do is clamp a little block right here, a spacer, that will allow us to slide this up to the spacer, then make our cut so that our material is not in contact with the minor gauge and the rip fence at the same time. That's, that's a possibly bad situation. Well, I can't do that without moving the fence with every other cut. So I'm going to break a rule here. I'm going to run this so that it's in contact with the minor gauge and the fence at the same time as a passability blade. Okay, and the reason I'm going to do that is, is well, there's a bunch of reasons, but number one, I'm comfortable being able to do this safely. Um, with my level of experience and what I've done before, I have no problem doing this. Number two, it's me doing it, not a student. So if I cut my hand off, it's not on, you know, school's not going to get sued. But there's really no other way to do it right now without multiple moves of the fence, which I don't want. So this is how we're going to do it. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to face down. Nice and slow. Bring this back over here. All right, so here's our rabbit, okay? It's exactly what we want. Quarter inch wide, quarter inch deep, all the way around. All right, so we start working on the miter work, the 45 degree angles at the corners of these, okay? So I've got a piece here, it looks like it's doing pretty good. The way we do this is we generally always, once again, generally always, um, start with a long edge first. So I start with one of these edges first as opposed to one of the short ones. Because if I make a mistake, excuse me, and cut one of these guys too short, I can always use it for the end pieces. If I cut one of the end pieces too short, it's trash, it's firewood. Okay? So the way we're going to do this is we have, and I'm going to bring this over so you guys can see it a little better. That's the wrong way. That's too much. <laughs> so we have a miter sled here on the table saw. And what this is, it's, it's been set up to cut as close to exact 45 degree angles as it can, as we can, okay? And this is actually more accurate than our miter saw. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is trim one end at 45 here. So now I can come over. And I have this one little piece here, this little test piece kind of thing. It's got a miter on it. Because I need it so that I can slide this over to where I think it's right. I can take this and check it. Let's make sure the corners come together where I want them to. That's what I want right there. So I hold it in place. I've got a pencil here that, I've got a little thing of sandpaper here. I get a real fine point on the tip of the pencil. Then I can come over here to this corner 
and mark it. So now I have my pencil mark here where the corner of this rabbit is, okay? So what I don't want to do when, I, when I'm doing this is I don't want to try and nail this first try, okay? Um, big mistake. What I want to do is cut just outside this line a hair. So it gives me a chance to come back several times and sneak up on the cut and get it just right. So I'm going to take my pencil line. I'm going to line it up just to the left of my blade curve, right? The gap that was created by the blade originally. Just to the left of it. And we're going to see what we got. Because there's a little technique you can use here to get this dead on. Okay, so I've got my little test piece here. Bring them together right where I want them. Okay. I got about uh, a little over a 30 second minute still to go. So now what I do, it's really hard to know exactly where this blade is in relation to this curve right here. So here's what we do. This is what's known as an alternate top bevel blade. It's an ATB blade. And all that really means is that every other tooth points the opposite direction. One tooth points up and to the left, one tooth points up and to the right. So I'm gonna find one of those teeth that point up and to the left. I'm just gonna kiss that tooth with the end of this board. I'm gonna to touch the end of my stock, this piece of oak, to the tooth. Now I can drag it off. Now I can confidently slide this over a little bit, knowing how much I'm doing. I can get closer to where I want to be. That's not going to be enough. I can already tell. This is the last drawer in the project for the beadwork. And so it's get a little bit easier all the time. Need a little bit more. Bring it up, find that left tooth. Just bring it up and let that end of that oak trim kiss it. Now I can slide it over how much I want. I think, I think I'm going to need a little bit more off. We'll see. So this is actually, this has been done a lot in this shop, student work. And it can be a real pain for a student because um, it's, it's, a, it's a long process because you need to take your time. Um, it's not something that goes quick. You need patience. You don't need anybody bothering you. You need to be able to just sit here and do it. And there's one table saw. So you've got people standing there waiting to use it while you've got control of it. Not only that, you've got a limited amount of time in class. So it's really can be a little frustrating and, and hard to deal with sometimes as a student out here. I'm close. I'll check it at the other end. No, nope, I need a hair more off there. So I understand the frustration that students sometimes have trying to do nice work, um, detailed work in here. It can be it can be challenging to say the least. I mean, I'm in here with nobody else here. It's basically dead quiet. Nobody bugging me. I can stand at this table saw all day long. I mean, I'm sitting there talking, but there might as well not be anybody anywhere. You know, besides I talk to myself a lot anyway, so it's just like as if I wasn't trying to teach, if that's what you want to call this. All right, that's got us where we want. So we're going to take a little uh, guitar binding tape, and we're just going to hold this in place for now right where we want it. 
why do you, why are you using guitar binding tape? Well, because we make guitars here and I had it lying around, so that's why. Yay. All right, so now I can start working my way around the rest of the top or front of the box. <clears throat> so my next cut, I need to go that away. Do I have any issues down here? Not yet. <laughs> Work our way around. Once again, we take Mr. Sharp Pencil, bring it up, get it lined up, make our mark here in the corner. There it is. Oops, somebody trying to get in. And we'll make this cut. Let's see what we got. Close, but no cigar. Take a little more off. And we're just going to keep using that process of touching the side of one of these teeth lightly. Now I can control how much I want off there. Slid it away from the blade a little bit when I started it. Sure enough, let's try that again. This would really suck if um, the only bench I had to work at was way over the other side of the shop, and I go back and forth to this machine all the time. That would not be fun. All right, there we go. That's what I want. <laughs> I think that might have gone right there. Oh, look at that. That right there is a thing of beauty. A little fuzzy sticking up there. Oh, maybe not. Oh, that's got it. Okay. Is this guy stuck on there temporarily? Move on to the next one. Okay. Go that way. And this thing has a little tear in it, but I guess not. Push this in around the other direction. around here see how we look oh, that's that's gonna work very nice all right there's our mark pencil and there's our mark oh so that's a good question I just look looking um, so a couple of things about this binding tape for guitars um, it's very tough. It's got a very tacky, sticky side, and it doesn't leave a residue when you remove the tape. That's probably the biggest issue. Um, it pulls off clean, where a lot of tapes, like blue painter's tape, things like that, they can sometimes leave just a little bit of, of adhesive residue to the surface of the wood, and you really do not want that on a guitar. Um, so it's, it's just, I mean, it's really ooey gooey stuff. There's this, I mean, it's just, 
every once in a while you have to clean these teeth off from all the rubbery stuff from the tape. So it's really sticky and I can pull this really tight without the tape tearing and things like that. So um, we buy it. <coughs> There's a lot of different places you can get it, but I mean, not locally. Um, it's usually online. There's an online company called Stumac, S-T-E-W-M-A-C, where we get pretty much all of our um, guitar supplies, um, tooling, things like that, parts, things like that. That's where I get it. Um, there's a few others, but for the most part, Stumax is kind of the go-to place for things like this. Um, there's another, a couple other places like Luthier's Mercantile um, and things like that where you can get some specialty tools and stuff. But um, we actually have an account. I can use a purchase order and buy stuff from Stumac. Um, and it's one of the few places we have an account um, for guitar stuff. Um, and before we got that account, I was buying everything myself. And when the first year we started this guitar class, I think in the first two years we ran the guitar class, this would be the fourth year. I think I spent about between two and three thousand dollars a year of my own money trying to get this class up and running and get the tooling for it before we finally got a, an account with them through this through the district. So that was a pain, but it worked. We got what we needed. And we're ready to go. All right. So I've got my mark. I like the questions, by the way. Thank you for asking questions. It makes me feel like there's somebody actually here. Um, and it, in this, this current situation, it really doesn't feel like there's people here half the time. All right, let's get this guy cut. I can already tell I'm going to have to take a little more off, which is fine. I do not want to take too much off on the first pass. Like before, we're going to sneak up on it and find that left tooth. Just touch it. Now I can shift it. That looks pretty good right there. Don't screw up, Brandon. I, I think that was the money right there. That was the money cut, I believe. That's really, I think it is. We're gonna go ahead and start cutting this little one. We'll see how good I did, okay. This one's a little, I'm going to go ahead and get one piece of tape on there to keep it from flopping around. All right. Yeah, that's going to be fine. That looks good. I just have to stand up for this. So this is the hardest one because you have to kind of lean it on there and eyeball it. So this is when you really want to give it a little bit of extra room on your first cut so you don't accidentally cut it too short. There's my kerf, there's my mark, and boy it's dark down there. There we go. That's what I want. <laughs> Well, that sucks. This took a big chunk out of this piece. I gotta start that over. It took a big chunk out of the top of it, so that's not good. So we'll have to just remark it. Like I said, I don't know if I told you guys, the small projects in here are generally harder, more difficult than, than big projects. A lot of students will pick a small project because they think it'll be easy. But in general, the smaller the project, the more difficult it is. 
and that's simply for biggest reason is that um, you can't make mistakes on a small project the way you can a large project. On a project like one of these drawers, something the size of one of these drawers, you make a mistake of a 16th or a 32nd of an inch, you're going to see it on something the size of, say, a king size bed frame or something like that, or, you know, it's not nearly as visible. And I'll be a monkey's uncle. Nope, that's got to come a lot. So the smaller, the, and plus you're working with very tiny parts, that makes it, you know, a lot of people get very nervous with their fingers around a blade like this. Because this is close. Thank goodness it's a saw stop because if I accidentally touch that thing, I'd rather not lose a finger, to be honest with you. Okay, I done it. If I didn't get it right on that one, I'd probably take too much off. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. I gotta take a hair more off. I could have sworn I took too much off. Well, you know, just a tiny bit. That might be it. I can't tell. It's, I'm right down to the gnats behind here. I'm getting it just right. Well, it's got to come off more. I'm not even sure I took anything off on that last time. I should, what I should have done, if, if, if I had to do a lot of this, I'd make a shooting board, a miter shooting board, and that allows you to take off minuscule amounts with a hand plane and just really dial something like this in. It's been pretty sweet. <laughs> Be the one, be the one. Oh, dang, it's still, I get the feeling it's moving. <clears throat> and not the way I want it to, which is not at all, actually. There's my mark. I got a feeling I'm going to overcut this. End up having to replace it. <laughs> Let's see if I was right or wrong. So I've got a question for you guys, and the question is, who's the man? You can say it. I am. I just nailed that last one. That's perfect. Okay. So now we're ready for glue up. All right. And I want to place these on the same surfaces they're currently on. So I don't want to mix them up, put this one over here and blah, blah, blah. So I'm just going to lay them out so I know how they go. We're ready to rock. Uh, seriously sticky tape and th being that sticky you'd think it'd leave gunk all over your material okay so i have a little glue brush here that i've trimmed most of the fuzzies off it, and it's easier to do this if this was a full-blown this would not I I had no one there. this would not work well if it was um a regular size glue brush without being trimmed off so we're going to take a little bit of glue and every time so far i put way too much out there all right and i'm going to do this one first pretty straightforward what i want to do is get enough glue in there obviously to hold the piece in place but without a lot of glue squeeze out i don't want a bunch of glue squeezing out all over the place because it would be an incredible pain to clean off this after the fact um, I just don't want to do it. So that's why I'm taking a little more care with the gluing than I may on some other things. Sometimes glue is in a place that's easier to clean off than others. No fasteners, no nails, no nothing. This is not a structural situation. We're not 
holding up a shelf on a bookshelf or anything like that. And this is some very, very dry wood. It is sucking up this glue like nobody's business. I mean, it is seriously sucking up a lot of glue. All right, there's our first one. Okay, I'm gonna use this little test dummy to make sure I've got this in the right place. There's my joint, and that looks like the right spot. So I'm gonna keep removing this. And we're gonna get our binding tape on here. Nice and tight. See, that's the nice thing about this binding tape. I can really pull on it and hold that part tight against there. And I can do it to the point that um, the tape itself is causing a little bit of glue squeeze out, which is great. Because I can clean it up right now without causing too much of a problem. Okay. Now my hands wet. I don't like to do this tape when my hands wet. Nice and tight. That's what we want to get on this thing. This little guy's next. So, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting being in this shop all day with nobody here, nobody to talk to, nothing to do but I mean, this is kind of cool being able to make something here without a bunch of hassle, but, you know, I don't often get a chance to build anything. Unless I do it in the summer, and usually my summers are filled with classes, either taking a class or teaching a class. Don't get a lot of opportunity. Man, that's a nice fit. That that's a really nice miter right there. There's absolutely no gap. <clears throat> that's what we look for. I do not want to have to repair gaps or fix them or try to make them go away. I'd rather just do it right. All right, another long one. Sounds like uh, my partner in crime next door, Miss Fungi, that teaches um, drafting engineering, has, has signed off for the day. You guys aren't that lucky. You're going to be right here with me the whole way. I am not letting you go. And that's just the way it is. Why? You ask? Anybody ask why? Nobody? Well, you want to know why? Well, I'll tell you. Because I can. Sounds like maybe may a bit of a cop out, but it works for me. He's out there, a little bit there. Tape. So you guys didn't know about guitar binding tape, did you? So you actually learned something big. Don't tell me you didn't learn anything, because you did. 
learned about guitar binding tape. So now you can go tell all your family and friends that you actually, for one, learn something in the woods class. I'm basically assuming that you did. Last one. Last one. Pain's almost over. No blood, no foul. There's going to be some squeeze out on this one. I can already tell. I'll get that in the water so it doesn't harden. Long day. last drawer then we can start on the timbre door which is really pretty nice that's going to be interesting stay tuned i'm like wiley coyote super genius and if you don't know who wiley coyote is you watch the wrong cartoons people all right so that's it drawers trimmed out let it dry get it moved over there and then we get to start working on the timbers yeah i didn't hear anything sam sammy um so okay okay when we say yeah i asked why lol oh okay i don't mind yes sir and apparently my mic isn't working but your keyboard is so you got that going for you all right you guys um do me a favor make sure your name gets in the chat window for attendance take care of yourselves it was nice to have you here today. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow and goodbye. Hasta la vista. I don't know any other goodbyes in other language. Ciao. Uh, Ugdi Ibe? No, that's not pig Latin. I don't know. Good day, I beg. Yeah, that's that's correct. See you guys. Get me the heck out of here. Why? Right, what else do we got? <sighs> Aloha. Yes. Thank you, Wyatt. Aloha. Very good. <clears throat>